Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Midland Community Stadium for the city championship game, the Dow High Chargers taking on the Midland High Chemics, the 43rd city championship game in our history. Hi, this is Dave Marsh bringing you all the action tonight along with Frank Aldemore. And uh, Coach, there's something special about this night. You, people love the football season, but you look ahead to this this week, this game, there's added excitement at the schools, in town, and you can just kind of feel it in the stadium. Well, there's a lot of electricity all the way through, and it continues to build up as the game goes on, and, and then uh, even after the game, and months after the game, it's still going on, and people talk about it for a while. Remember, Dave, that this is the number one event in the city of Midland. More people come to this game than any other single event that occurs all year, so it's a it's a great great attraction, and it's going to be it's a beautiful night, so that would be great football. Yeah, and you can see the student section uh, for the Chemex, and then across the way, the student section with the Dow High Chargers as they uh, are ready to cheer on their classmates in uh, in this big game, and in uh, a big game it is. Uh, added importance uh, tonight. Midland High comes into the game undefeated, 8-0, a remarkable achievement that uh, you just don't, uh, that sure doesn't happen every year. And meanwhile, Dow High comes into the game at 5-3, uh, and three, and they need a victory to reach the postseason. Well, Dave, I took a look at this. You know, you know how hard it is to be undefeated? I mean, so many things have to fall into place for you to have that happen. An example of that was the Mount Pleasant game which, you know, the fourth quarter was uh, so oh, yeah. back and forth. Uh, Heritage, 7-0. and Even Bay City Central, that was a, a very good game for Midland. So, you know, I took a look at this and I said, okay, you know, they, they've got something going. There, there, there's something that builds as you go through that. 8-0, that's a fantastic record. And they can't take that away from you. If you win tonight, you're 9-0, and it's a great season for you, no matter what happens in the playoffs. For Dow, they're five and three. They win tonight, they're in the playoffs, which is a, a, a wonderful achievement. I thought earlier in the year watching Dow that they should be six and three at some point. Uh, they they kind of they let the flushing game get away from them. Uh, they, they I honestly felt they should have had the six wins at this point, uh, but they didn't. And now they've got to struggle and fight their way through to to win a game against a formidable opponent. Dow High has won their last two uh, two outings. They won a thriller last weekend uh, against John Glenn, 42-41, and so they're on a bit of a roll right now. And um, I think they're they have a lot of confidence coming into the game. Exactly, and I think that you know at this point they they've got to do some things that that are going to uh, kind of put make Midland a little bit uncomfortable, and that's that's how you, that's how you beat Midland. You take away what really what they do best, and you make them a little uncomfortable. Midland, on the other hand, is uh, going to play their great defense and, and rely a lot on their field position and things like that. Well, as you mentioned, uh, those uh, those keys. Let's let's take a look at your uh, three keys of the game for each team as we do that with every broadcast and. Uh, and share with us, uh, I know you watch a lot of film during the week and you've seen both these teams play, uh, at least one of them every week this year. Share with us the keys tonight. Well, you know, I, I looked at Dow and I felt that, okay, if, if you're playing Midland, you cannot have turnovers. You cannot allow Midland to intercept, uh, recover a fumble, because they're all about that. And they, they actually, they like a, like a feeding frenzy when they do that. And you kind of just say, okay, I, I, I've got to do things that will definitely limit my turnovers third down efficiency and this has been Dow's uh, Achilles heel all year in that they get the third down and they don't make the third down or they're yard short of a third down or the other team's third and nine and they make a third down mm -hmm. this happened last week against John Glenn and the third thing is you if you are playing Midland you have to stand toe to toe and match their physicality because if you don't, again, they feed on that. They know, a classic example of that, last week, Bay City Western. Bay City Western rolling along, 7-0, having a good season, and Midland came in there and just was so much, so 
physical as the game went on and it just continued to go and all of a sudden you saw the western players back off and mm -hmm. the game was 35 nothing before you had anything yep. going now we go to to midland for for theirs and and i think they gotta set the tone early the longer dow stays in the game the more dow will get the confidence right now they're an underdog and uh, even with a good team you're still an underdog and you try to set the, when you're the, when you're in charge you try to set the tone early the next thing superior special team play midland's kickers there's their kickoff teams their coverage teams uh they're they're all very very good and and well coached and very disciplined and really make the difference in the volume this is what i call hidden yardage and it's hard to tell coaches what hidden yard is all about and the third thing is it's a field position game for midland we will check at halftime and watch the number of series that midland starts somewhere around the 50 yard line it's a phenomenal number well we'll see how that all plays out uh, you mentioned those special teams midland uh high year in and year out has tremendous special teams play and uh, that's often a, a key to their game and a key for the other team to to try to counter balance um, coming into the game we mentioned the records midland high of course um, having uh, a uh, rich history and they extended their uh, their streak uh, has now have had a winning season 36 years in a row, the longest streak in the state, and they're three years shy, I think, of the all-time record held by Marysville. Um, and so uh, just a tremendous uh, accomplishment on their part. And, uh, and we mentioned uh, Dow has had some recent success as well with playoffs. They won this contest back in 20, uh, 2010, 24 nothing. And it seems uh, when uh, Dow has been victorious, they uh, have, have shown up big on defense. They have uh, shut the Chemex out four times um, in this uh, history. And um, Coach, uh, as we uh, look down on the field, the Midland High Marching Band is uh, on the field. Midland is the home team tonight. And hence uh, the Chemic Marching Band will be out there and they'll be performing the National Anthem in a minute. Um, that's one thing you look forward to at halftime when they have both the bands go out there. I love that halftime. I think it's that's incredible. phenomenal, especially when you see other teams' bands, uh, you know, meager assortment of, uh -huh. <laughs> of uh, members and equipment. And uh -huh. Sometimes you have uh, a band that has a 10 to 20 people playing yeah. and 200 other people, flag girls and, and everything else, <laughs> and you don't have a band. No, we have all of that plus two Times superior two. bands, nearly 500 total in the bands. I think that's just terrific. Yeah, incredible. And so right now the uh, Midland High Band uh, showing great sportsmanship, playing the Dow High fight song um, over to the fans on the Dow High side uh, opposite uh, the home side here. Um, and uh, yeah, it'll be a packed house tonight. It's a nice night for football. Maybe a bit on the brisk side, but uh, there's no rain. Um, it's just good football weather. And the Dow High uh, faithful uh, cheering on their Chargers as they uh, enter the field. Um, one thing that we uh, will really look at, Midland High has had stellar quarterback play this year out of senior Alec Johnson, and he is a, a guy that just seems to get better every week. Well, he's a straw that stirs the drink. I mean, he's he's such a, he's a I, I call him a quad player. He's a great quarterback. He can run. He can catch a pass out of the backfield if you want to do that. He catches punts. He, he's a terrific defensive back. I mean, he is just the perfect leader for a, a ball club. And he's the reason you're 9-0. You're 9-0 because he has stepped up and, and been a great player, not not even being a starter last year, played defense right. and, and things. But he right. stepped up, and, and there are a lot of players on this team that have stepped up to, to give them an undefeated season so far. And so the... Teams are led, uh, Eric Metner, the head coach for the Chemics, 
Meanwhile, Jason Watkins uh, leads the way for the Dow High Chargers. Well, now we're going to send it on down to the field, ladies and gentlemen, for our national anthem to be played by the Midland High Marching Band. And so, folks, we are about to get underway as the Chemical Marching Band uh, departs the field after a great uh, pregame show. And um, Midland High won the toss. They will defer the decision to second half. So I'm sure that means Dow will receive. And uh, Coach, we had mentioned uh, Alec Johnson at the quarterback position for Midland. Uh, Dow, meanwhile, Gavin Groshek did not start the year as the starting quarterback, but he earned his way into that starting role, and he, he really provides a spark for the, that Charger well, team. They are different teams since he took over being the quarterback because he gave them that extra added dimension of being able to run, being able to throw on the run, uh, and, and really gave him a senior leadership quality. So they've been a different team and, and, and a much better team at that point. Groshek, he mentioned a, a capable runner. He has 307 yards rushing, uh, three touchdowns on the year. He's also thrown for 202 yards and a pair of touchdowns. Meanwhile, you can look for Alex Huss as the, a primary runner for Dow. Alex has uh, 672 yards on the year, seven touchdowns, averaging 5.6 yards per carry, an impressive average. Uh, I think you can also look for Lucas Burrell uh, to tote the pigskin a little bit. He's got 312 yards. He averages over eight yards a carry. See, I think for Midland to be successful tonight, it's being able to stop Lucas Burrell. If they can stop Lucas Burrell on those third and threes, then this, it's going to be a, a long night for Dow. If they can't stop Lucas Burrell, then Dow's going to move in. Then that treasured field position yeah. game really comes into play. Which they really did a great job of that in their win over Heritage a couple weeks ago. And so Midland about to kick off to start the contest. Ryan Singer, number seven, he's a senior. He does the kickoff duties. He is the place kicker as well. And he's had a, has a great year as a 
as a kicker for Midland High. And Singer's boot is a deep one, way into the end zone. Uh, a lot of leg there by Singer. Not wind aided, there doesn't seem to be much wind today. The flags are uh, hanging pretty still from the, the flagpole. And uh, so as Dow High uh, takes over first and 10 on their own 20, I mentioned uh, Huss as, uh, as a running back. Uh, uh, you can look at in the wide outs, Brennan Miller, number four, Zach Hook, number five, John Brandon, number nine. We'll see a lot of uh, action out uh, as receivers. And so Groshek under center. And uh, yeah, somebody jumped early. Rogowski, Robert Rogowski, tight end, uh, was in motion. And then uh, somebody jumped a little over anxious. I know there's a lot of adrenaline in this game. You want to make that first big play, first big hit. Just get a little over anxious. But it's actually, it's on, it's on Midland. So it's on uh, Midland, Midland was the one offsides. that was over anxious. So uh, the thing that you want to see here is that Steve Elmer, six foot five, three hundred pounds, is playing on the nose. Now what they're saying is that we are going to jam up the middle of the Dow offensive line. Now I used to have, I used to tell our quarterbacks, there are certain players you don't run at, and and he would be one. You see, in there, Midland is in a very very tight formation right now. It's going to be Huss. Darts his way ahead for about a yard, maybe two. Uh, good stutter step there. Could have been stopped for a loss, but he picked up a couple. It'll bring up a second and two situation. Very good flow to the ball by Midland's defense, perimeter defense. Again, they're going to jam up inside, and they're going to say, okay, if you're going to beat us, you're going to beat us outside. And we can see that in the first series right here. Huss again in the tailback position. Murkowski comes over to the left side. Hand up to Huss. And he's going to be short. We'll bring up a third down. Looks like uh, Michael Wright in on the stop. That uh, defensive front is uh, number 36, Brady Harbron, who's had a really a terrific year for Midland. Steve Elmer, number 72, the big fella that you referred to. Uh, number 25, Tyler Sauve is uh, on the defensive front. He has been playing some linebacker as well this year. And 53, Terrence Thomas, also on that defensive front. And handoff, and he's going to be short. See, there's that third down. We talk about that third down play. And that was to Lucas Burrell, and they stopped him. So in four downs, Dow gained four yards. Right. The, the, the benefit of the offsides didn't help them. And Midland's defense, again, playing very, very stout in the middle of that line. That's a, we'll see if that's an indicator. You mentioned that's a big play it's, on both sides the of the ball. the whole game. Now, again, we're going to watch where Dow's had trouble with their snap and Dow's really had trouble with their punting at different times in the year. So we're gonna take a look at that and see what, what's gonna go on here. Travis McNally takes a high and there's snap. There's an example again of... Does take a charger bounce and uh, he's he probably was fortunate to get that much out of it, uh, down to the 47. But the high snap made him rush the kick and Midland will take over with terrific field position. And remember what I said, field position. You know, how many times is Midland gonna start in the middle of the field? And this is the first series right off the bat, which is why you defer and kick. You try to turn it over to your defense and say, go get them. So on that uh, defensive line for Dow, uh, number nine, Billy Schutte, 25, Tyler Rysick. For 61, A.J. Hooper. First and 10. Hand off to Travis Patton. Charges away. Good job by that uh, Charger defense. 32, uh, Cor Alan Corbet on the stop. Going to pick up uh, maybe two on the play. 
Travis Patton, the leading rusher for the Chemex, uh, 749 yards on the season coming in, 11 touchdowns. Now, there's no question Midland is going to go to the wide side of the field here. Ball on the hash, trips to the field. There's the rollout right there. I mean, that is a given play. And again, Johnson eludes the rush and is able to make something out of nothing. That, that's what impresses me a lot from him. I mean, I know the play's going that way, so I know the Dow High guys know the play's going that way. And they still were able to get the position out there and make the play. Finds Thomas Smith on the reception down to the Chargers side of the field, the Dow High 47. It'll bring up third and four for the Chemex. Smith with 20 receptions on the year coming into the game. That's his 21st. It'll put him over 200 yards receiving on the season. Big third down here, Dave. Absolutely. Big third down. And uh, Midland is going to call time out. Eric Metner is, did not like what he saw. I think maybe felt that was taking too much time to uh, get that play underway. Can't afford a five-yard penalty on this, uh, on this play right here. So they will talk it over. Um, but sometimes they're good timeouts and sometimes timeouts are kind of frustrating to coaches. And this is one of those that are that was a good timeout, yet when you come off, you're kind of frustrated because you don't like to lose the timeout, but more important, you can't lose the five yards right. at this point. Yeah. And you can't have a screw up because somebody didn't understand what was happening. Well, this is a big to keep the clock moving, move the chains, the field position, um, and what you said about, you know, try to establish control of things early. Set that tone early. And so, uh, see, I've been impressed with Dow in the first two plays. They've come very hard, very hard. Here we go, third and four for the Chemex. Johnson rolls to his right, looks downfield, overthrows, it's intercepted. Groshek with the interception. And he's got room to run. Past the 50, down in the middle of the high territory. So the ball is tailed behind Johnson. He tried to thread it in. There was a lot of, a lot of room in Groshek. Johnny on the spot with the reception. And all the way down to middle of territory. Big play for the Chargers. See it there's again. Your flow, there's your rollout. And really under no pressure at all. He just overthrew it. Well covered by the Chargers. Uh, McNally just, just was in position as well. And uh, huge play for the Charger defense. Now again, that field position now could very easily shift the other way. Even if, even if Dow doesn't do anything here, Midland's gonna get the ball if they get it back inside their 20 yard line. And that's uh, Corbet on the carry. Good, strong run. He's going to pick up uh, nearly five. Harburn on the stop, uh, but a good first down pickup for Dow High. Well, plus, that's a big play for Dow for some early momentum and uh, boost some confidence, maybe put Midland on their heels. Midland defense has been phenomenal this year. They're going to be. Uh, called on to stand here early in this game. Back Groshek rolls to his left, cuts back up the middle, is, uh, swung down by Elmer. It looked like he had some room, but Elmer got a big mitt on him and just flung him to the turf after uh, no game. Okay, here we come to a very large, very large third down. And here's why, if you make it, great. If you don't make it, now as a coach, you're faced with a decision. Do I punt and put them way in the hole, or do I go for it and, and take a chance? The pitch is to the right, and he's gonna be short. No game. Lucas Burrell on the carry. And it is a fourth down. It is that decision time right here. And it looks like the Chargers are gonna go for it. 
falls just inside the 41. We're going to call it the 40. It's a fourth in the long three for the Chargers. Huge play here in the early going. Looks like they're trying to draw them offside, and they're going to call timeout. Tried to get the hard Good count. Good discipline. Yeah, Midland uh, <laughs> held true, and uh, Groshek calls the timeout. Now, I'm going to tell you a little former old coaching strategy of mine. In, in the first half, if it was fourth down, and we were not inside the 35-yard line, mm -hmm. we were punting. Okay. It didn't matter. We had already made the decision before that we were not going to put our defense in jeopardy. That we were going to give them every opportunity to win the ball game, and we were going to give and try to upset this great field position type philosophy that Midland has. And, it, and it, it, this is a game of field position. The longer it goes, the better it is for Dow. And the, the longer it goes, the worse it is for Midland. Well, we'll see. Trying a different strategy than that right here. So here we go. Two tight end set. Handoff. Burrell is stopped short. He sprung out to the outside momentarily, but the Kemic defense equal to the task, harboring in on play. As was Johnson, he's picked up a couple, but Midland will take over on down at the 39. You know, this whole game of field position now at this point, Midland just, it was just a loss of four downs. They started last their their last possession at the 45, and now they got the ball back at the 39. So, okay, and Dow now has proven that he cannot effectively get a first down. Showed a lot of confidence in that defense to be able to uh, hold him. Patton with the handoff. Another good job by the uh, Charger defensive front. Charger defense did a good job there. They're really coming hard. Little Billy Shooty, number nine, is just crawling and grubbing and he, into everything. He's, he's uh, done a great job this year. Yeah, he's one of those grub type players. Yeah, I that, just. Uh, he's a pest. Yeah, that's kind of how I. Uh, please view jam him. up everything. So a big play there. It's now second and eight for the Chemex. Johnson back to pass, rolls to his right, looks downfield, he's got his man, and that is going uh, to be Smith once again, and they will move the chains. Great pattern, but great release. Nice smooth rollout, throw the ball on the line, nice catch, get your ball, get your first time. You know what I like about Midland's receivers is that they run to the stick. I mean, they make sure that when they run a pattern, they got a first down. Right. And I love that in, uh, in receivers. Alec Johnson, 60% passing on the year, 1,024 yards and 12 touchdowns. And that was his third interception of the year. Johnson's going to keep it. Got a little room on the outside, drives ahead, finally hauled down. But not before a uh, nice pickup, Gabe Miller brings him down. Johnson gets down nearly to the 35, and uh, he will get the first down. So first and 10, Chemex at the 35. And so after that, holding him on uh, Dow High in the fourth down, Midland with a couple of big plays, uh, picking up some big chunks of yardage, are uh, making their way deep into Charger territory. Just under five minutes to go in the first quarter. Low snap, Patton takes the handoff, cuts up. Spins down inside the 30. Miller a, again on the tackle. That was a beautiful run in that. Uh, Patton's jump cut is, is, is a thing of beauty. I mean, he gets in there, he makes that little jump cut. He gets up into the shoot. His feet hit the ground already. He's got two more steps. And yeah. that's, and that's a, a great first down. Uh, he gets six yards. Yeah, second and four. Uh, and in great field position. Inside the 30-yard inside the line. Patton just... Uh, Terrific running back. He's got good speed and quickness. And has a sense for that end zone. 
Johnson's going to keep it around the right side. Cuts up, drives ahead. Knocked down by McNally, but uh, Midland moving the chains once again. An effective play when you have such a good running back as Patton. You have to respect that fake handoff. And uh, Johnson is that, no that slouch little, as a runner. That run. little counter move is a beauty. Down to the 17 yard line. Will Williams checked out of the game. Ryan Singer, number seven. And Thomas Smith split out wide. Now, this to is the a left. decoy. These guys are a mile out there. They're going to run the football. Patton does take the handoff. See the, oh, and tremendous you, play. Donnie Doughty calls him down. I mean, they had two guys wow. that were almost on the opposite sideline. There's just no way you can throw to them. The ball is just too far of a throw. So it's a nice little decoy. You take two guys out and you're back to playing nine on nine. It's actually going to. It didn't pull down. No. Not, uh, Going to lose a yard on the play. Doughty, uh, terrific on both sides of the ball. He's a left tackle and no. uh, does a great job on Watch the out front. for Will Williams here. Watch out. Ball on the in to the field. He's in the left side. Goes over the middle and it is almost picked off and then almost caught. A risky pass once again, uh, broken up. This one should have been intercepted and maybe should have been caught. It's a it's a double whammy. Look like uh, Caleb Cam Richard. Short is a, they tried to catch Cam, they tried to catch Dow napping and sent the tight end on a on a fly pattern right up to center. Caleb Richard, the sophomore, did a great job. He was not fooled, knocked it down, and then uh, the ball almost caught by Cam Short. So that'll bring up a third and 11 for the Chemics. Johnson rolls to his right again. He's under pressure, he's under pressure. Throws over the middle, looking for Singer, but the uh, heavy rush by the Chargers. And uh, Robert Rogowski and Lucas Burrell, and uh, really just kind of had to get rid of it. Uh, well short, it'll bring up fourth down, and it looks like the Chemics will line up for a field goal. Ryan Singer. The field goal kicker for Midland. And uh, Thomas Smith does the holding. It'll be a 35-yard uh, attempt for Singer. No matter what happens here, this is a win for Dow because they didn't give up the early touchdown. You know what I said about setting this tone early? Good snap, good hold. The kick is up. It's got the distance, and it is no wide good. right. Plenty of lag, but the ball uh, just went straight right, and uh, Dow dodges the bullet, and we remain remember, scoreless. Remember what I said? That's a big win for Dow right there. The fact they came down and were unable to really get the score that they should have. Here's the kick. It's a good kick. It's a good hold, and it just misses just right. Oh, he kicked it a ton. Yeah, he did. And so Chargers back on offense. Dow defense stood strong that time. Sure did. Yeah, sure they, did. They did stand strong. Flag on the play. And Motion uh, on Dow. Wide out on the wide side jumped. You know, there's nothing that makes a coach more upset than a wide out who jumps offside because he doesn't have he doesn't have to worry about it. All he has to do is watch. Mm -hmm. He not, shouldn't be listening. He's so far away that and when he jumps offside, you see him say, "What are you thinking?" And now that's a, that's a big uh, penalty. So now not really a big play offense. It'll bring up a Midland uh, declined. Midland it. declined. Midland it. declined it. Hmm. Sure. Second wow. down and ten now in the hole. See, again, a, a good call. Grochik, another flag in the play. They might, might think the same thing. This one's against Middle. Oh, should have taken the penalty. Should have taken <laughs> Coulda, shoulda, woulda. Yeah, but you sure don't expect that to happen. So 
Now it's second and five instead of second and ten. So uh, mistake by the Kemic defense. You can look on that uh, Charger offensive line. We mentioned Dowdy, 79. Also uh, Devin Thompson, 66. Wes Meyer is number 59. On that front, Chase McNamara, number 68. You can also look for David Said, 52, to get some action. Another flag on the play, and this ball is caught. Zach Cook, ball was tipped, but he good con had great concentration, hauled it in. First down yardage, we'll see what the flag is. It's on down. Yeah, this, the same official, the side judge over here. This one is a false start on Dow. Okay, wow. we're gonna Look, it nullifies this terrific play by a hook. Then it goes for the interception, popped up in uh, great concentration. Great play, but all for naught. So now we're back to second and 10. So good thing they declined the penalty in the I, first place. I guess. <laughs> All I know is that this official down here is trying to earn his money tonight. Per, He's called three, pen flag. three <laughs> penalties in a row. I, usually I have a little word with him about this time, you know, but maybe keep it in your pocket you, for a little while. You would have had some words? I would have had a lot of words you at this point. You were kind of shy on the I am. Line. I was very shy. Mm -hmm. But I'd have had some words about this point. Second and 10. Groshek keeps it, cuts back, nice job. He's got room to run. Cuts it up the middle, now back to the outside. He's had the loose. Down to the 40, to 20. Green chase down to the 10, 5, and he is. In for a touchdown. Oh, what a run by Gavin Groshek. The player designed to the left. He cut it back to now, the right. Now, this is a tremendous, speed. see, this is the one thing that Midland, the weakness in Midland's defense is they over pursue so fast that when you have a cutback like that, now he's into the run lane. There was a good block out on the on the perimeter there, and now Grocheck's speed is greater than Midland's DBs, and they just can't catch him. Good try there by Johnson, and I would probably said he was down on the he one, was, but down yeah. on the one, but uh, we don't have instant replay except up here. <laughs> Extra point. Is up and no, no good. good. Sails right to the right. Uh, Devin Thompson with the try, but the Chargers strike first. It's a great lead block on that play. Grosham downfield, the downfield receiver. And the downfield receiver did a good job, and Groshek read it well. He uh, faked inside and took it back outside. And uh, the Dow High faithful on their feet. The uh, student section going crazy over there. And uh, Chargers on top, 6 nothing with a minute 25 remaining in the first quarter. And so, see how the Chemics respond to this? They've not been behind very often this year. See, so two things happened. First, Dow doesn't make the, the first down. Midland drives down the field, doesn't make their first down, has right. to try a, a little bit longer field goal mm -hmm. than you're comfortable with, especially on a cold night. And then Grocek breaks back and really runs a broken play and run, outruns the Midland uh, secondary for the touchdown. And again, the pursuit of Midland uh, played right into, that, into the hands of Grocek. Darren Savage with a kickoff. Scott Naples picks it up at the eight. Still on his feet, drives ahead, and is hauled, hauled down by a host of chargers. And Midland will take over first and 10 from their own 24 yard line. And so momentum definitely on the side of the Chargers. Like you said, when they held them to a field goal, either way, that was, was going to be a, a, that win. Was a win. And then uh, turned it into a big win right there with Groshek's uh, long touchdown run.
Now we'll see how Midland, it's how you respond. You know, it, 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 how your team is going to respond in these situations. And up to Patton, oh, hauled down from behind. Uh, great, great play, play. By Corbet. Yeah, Alan Corbet, the senior. Patton, I'm sure, thought he was going to come up with a big gain, and Corbet uh, just grabbed him around the ankles and knocked him down for a, after a one-yard gain. See, Dow's defense has been strong all year, very strong. And it's just their offense hasn't gotten them enough points to, to make it uh, successful. And put, sometimes it's put them in tough positions. Johnson finds Singer. Singer with the catch. Going to be, a, I think, a little shy of the first down. It may depend on the spot. Brought down by Burrell. He is a little short. It's going to be third and less than a yard. See, it's one of the few times I've seen a Midland receiver not run to the stick. He, he caught the ball, got it, and, and didn't make it. And really, if he goes another yard, he's got the stick to throw. It was a beautiful throw. As the clock winds down here on the first quarter. Midland's going to be content to uh, let the clock run out. It's kind of like a free timeout where they get to decide what to do here on this big third down play. You're watching this Midland High Dow High football game on MCTV 97 in Midland. The game will be cable cast on the following dates and times. It's Friday, October 19th at uh, 11.30 p.m. Saturday, October 20th and Sunday, October 21st at 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. And after this weekend, the game will be shown on MPS TV 98. That's TV 98. Check the Midland Public Schools website. As uh, you can see on the screen, www.mps.k12.mi.us for more dates and times. I also like to congratulate MCTV's team of sports volunteers, which was inducted this past spring into the Midland County Sports Hall of Fame. And uh, the Hall of Fame, uh, as you know, Coach, uh, working towards moving that uh, to Dow Diamond next spring. And uh, that's quite a venue for that. It's it'll be, be a great beautiful. venue for it and uh, really, really help promote the history of, of uh, sports in Midland. Um, but congratulations to all the MCTV volunteers for uh, their induction. Sure deserve it. Well, here we go. Third in inches for the Chemex. I think we're looking at a quarterback sneak here. Absolutely. It's going to be Patton to the right. And he's going to get the first down. Um, he's going to be brought down by Richard. And I believe Burrell on the stop. Okay, but Middle so will move the chains. Where did they run the ball? To they the ran right. it to the right. Who's on the right? Steve Elmer, your number one guy. Rule of thumb, give it to your best back over your best lineman with your best play. And that's exactly it. And if you're on defense, you got to say, okay, where's Elmer? Right. That's where I'm running the ball. If I'm on offense and I'm the coach, I'm saying, where's Elmer? That's where I'm not running the ball. Elmer is going to Notre Dame for a reason. And he is one fine player. Johnson tries to spin away. Another great play by Burrell. He was going to try to run right, but uh, Burrell blows the play up. He's having a good game so far on the defensive side of the ball. Lucas Burrell has a different motor than a lot of players. You, you look for players like Lucas Burrell. Daniel Saeed um, also uh, seen some action there on the defensive front for the Chargers, but he will check out for this play. It is second and 10. Johnson, no swing pass. And uh, Williams, uh, they try to get him in space to make something happen. He's able to pick up four, but uh, Chargers uh, prevent the big play. That was a very good play by Corbet, being able to control Williams on that little spinner throw. Third and five for the Chemex. Referred to Williams as the road runner. And we'll see if, uh, if that holds now, true sometime today. We're see a little bit of motion here and then something to the field. Johnson back to pass. He's looking for Singer. Got him. 
It's going to be a first down and drives ahead. Good effort by Singer. Beautiful job of running to the stick. Brought down by Joel Miller. This is a short throw, and short side throw. Run to the stick. Good throw before they can move. And almost six yards after the catch. The Miller boys bring him down. That's Joel and Gabe. But Midland uh, now into Charger territory down to the 41. And we said, how will Mid Midland respond? And so far they've uh, responded well with a, uh, putting together a nice drive here so far. Short in motion. And Johnson will keep it and haul it down again. This time Corbet blows up the play. So they seem to have a hawk on uh, Johnson. They know he's a dangerous runner. You just don't want him to hurt him. Alan Corbet is having a great game on that backside. And you know, you know what he has. He has Johnson on the cross block. Mm -hmm. He has Johnson if he rolls out. So it's a, he's doing a, an excellent job of, of uh, we call it spotting. Right, Johnson, Johnson loses is that a, a soccer yard. Term spotting. Sure. <laughs> Patton kicks it to the outside. Now cuts back up, but uh, well done by the Charger defense again. Dowdy was in there, and uh, also Lucas Burrell once again. So he picks up about three, but we're looking at third and seven for the Chemex. Ball just inside the 39 yard line. So another big play here. Another big third down in this ball game. Dow high on top, six nothing in the second quarter. Johnson back to pass and it is, oh, caught. Down to the 15, 10, all the way down to the five yard line goes uh, Thomas Smith. The Charger went for the interception, did not get it, and Smith hauls it in. Ball had a lot of zip on it. Safety cut in front, and really took a, a poor, poor angle to the interception. And the result is a, a big gain. I also think uh, uh, Brennan Miller tried to get the interception. I think the ball had a little more heat on it than he well, thought. Well, his, his angle uh, to the ball was bad, and the result was He's not going to get there. First that left his halfback without any help. First and goal from the five for Midland High. Going with that power backfield. Low snap. Patton is going to get down to about the three. That's uh, Robert Rogowski on the tackle for Dow High. So it'll bring up second and goal from the three. See if Midland continues with this power formation, and they do. Unbalanced Nathan left. Nathan Fisher. Unbalanced left. And Scott power Naples. Left. Our lead blockers, Patton drives ahead. Rogowski tripped him up, but he was able to maintain his balance and get all the way down to the one. Boy, that's one of those so close plays. Yeah, Rogowski got in almost there. Almost got him on that play there. But it's really tough to bring Patton down just kind of with getting one arm on him. So you have and to recognize they're in an unbalanced, actually unbalanced overload backfield. And now we're going to see that uh, a little more balance here. But still power to the right. And where is Elmer? They're going to run over Elmer. Patton uh, is in for the touchdown. It was close, but he snuck in there, and uh, you, you called it right. They followed us. Elmer off to the right side in the Chemic strike. And we're tied up at six with the extra point coming. And here comes, Look. you can just see the, the hole open up and trying to get him from behind and you just, you just can't get him from behind. Yep, great job yeah, blocking by Elmer. Yeah, it was an excellent job. Gabe Miller tried to uh, mm -hmm. move him. Let's see what they call here. Both sides pointing at each other. It's gonna be offsides on Dow. 
I think they jumped and causing the movement. And so it'll uh, inch a little bit closer. Midland will decline it. I mean, you're used to doing extra points from the three, so why, uh, why change that just for an extra yard? The only advantage is if you decide now you want to go for two. That I would, would think it's pretty early in the game to do pretty that. Early. Don't give up the points at this point, especially here when you have an excellent kicker and one point puts you out in front. Singer's extra point is up and it is good. And the Chemex take the lead seven to six here with 646 remaining in the second quarter. And now it's time for the Midland faithful to get on their feet and cheer on their team. You know, Dave, that extra point, I, the snap, excellent. You know, and, yeah. and the, you know, we talk about special teams and you know, you, you cannot survive. We saw Dow's poor snap on a punt which gave Midland great field position. You cannot survive without a snapper. Austin Rapanis, first year center, great. junior, in there, and he's made some great snaps all year. And you know, it's not easy being the center today with shotgun and right. under center. Uh, you know, it, it takes a very special person to be able to handle that. Yeah, you mentioned Rapanis uh, doing a great job at the center. And we've talked about Elmer also on that offensive line his uh, left guard is Manny Hall, number 51. The right guard is 66, Nick Aid. We mentioned Elmer, of course, and uh, also at the tackle position is 56, Jacob Dostal. And uh, that offensive line has done a great job. Elmer gets a lot of the acclaim, but uh, as a unit, they've done a great job. So a short kickoff this time picked up by McNally at the 14, he's able to get it out uh, to about the 28 yard line. Midland's kickers do so many things. They, they pooch punt on the kickoff, they line drive like that one. They're excellent on a short squib there. Can kick it into the end zone. That's a really something. Alex Welter on the tackle on that uh, last kickoff return. Good special teams play by Welter. First and 10 Chargers. Huss goes off the left side. He's met, nice job. He was met at the 30, plows ahead to the 32. Good effort by Huss to get the extra couple yards. Absolutely. And that uh, defense for Midland, uh, Naples is one of the linebackers, 63, Colin Gagne. And uh, Michael Alexander, number 21, he had been injured for uh, the last several weeks. He is back in there at his middle linebacker position. Pitch left to Huss. And he gets it about to the 35 this time. Just on cue, Alexander on the stop, Gagne. Also, uh, in on the play, it'll bring up a third and three for the Chargers. And here's that big third down again that we'll, we'll continue to bring back all, all night because of Dow has not been successful on their third down conversions during the year. So this is a, a big play in order to keep that field position. Remember, set that tone early and right now it's only seven six. Yeah, got a great one going. Oh, no, the wideout jumped early again. That's his third penalty. Mm. So now you have a third and nine. You kind of suspect in that instance, the play was maybe going to him and he just got a little anxious and uh, definitely jumped early. So turns a third and three into a third and eight. And that Midland secondary, Michael Wright's number 10, Alex Goodwin having a tremendous year as number four at his safety position. Alec Johnson, back to pass goes Groshek. He's gonna keep it and he swung down. Just did not have any time for that play to develop. 
And uh, T Tyler Sove is a great sure tackle. Hauls down Gagne and it will force the punt. That penalty was very big at this point because now Midland is back again. Now remember we talked about centers and the inability to dial center to snap the ball last time and a, a very short kick by McNally. And so here's Dow standing on the 40. Much better snap that time. Better snap. And, and a very good roll. Still rolling all the way down to, we'll call that the 31. And so, uh, boy, it, it seemed that Midland was, could have a chance of getting it around midfield, but a good line drive kick and got a great roll. And, and uh, so uh, we'll see what happens. Catch the punt. That's the rule. Catch the punt. And one of those. Don't let it hit. One of your favorite phrases or things with football is that hidden yardage that you talked about. Catch the punt. You're back there to catch. I've got 10,000 people w to watch the game. <laughs> catch the punt. If you catch it, it probably saves about 15 yards, maybe. Oh, yeah. At least 15. Catch the punt. Fair catch, but catch it. 429 remaining in the second quarter. Johnson back to pass under heavy pressure. Hauled down. A big sack. Lucas Burrell. Lucas Burrell. A, Lucas Burrell was on a stunt, came through. Lucas Burrell that was came a to very play. Very good, very good stunt. Here he comes through the through the seam. And uh, mm. Running back wow. completely missed him. Great play. Huge play, actually. Going to bring up a second and 20, all the way back to the 21. That changes everything in this drive. Speaking of field position. Usually we see some sort of screen here. And Patton uh, hauled down. That's Robert Rogowski. He shot the gap and brings him down. Dow High defensive front is doing Dow a great High. job of uh, well, shooting remember, through. Well, one of the things we talked about was being able to match Midland's physicality. Yeah. And Dow's defense has gone above and beyond that in this first half. They are matching Midland uh, play for play. And Corbet. Burrell, Rogowski, Shooty, that whole group is, is just doing a wonderful job so far. So third and 20 now for the Chemex. Johnson's going to keep it, just nowhere to go. And uh, Rogowski in there again. It was 32, 34, 37, Corbet, Rogowski, and Burrell are just uh, making a lot of plays on defense. And so Midland will be forced to punt. That's a victory here for Dow. Because we talked about field position, they're shifted now, it right back. Now it's right back again, right. Two and a half minutes remaining in the quarter. Dow will have time to uh, put up a threat to score. Cody Meyer, number two, split out wide to the left on the punt return. Naples is the punter. A good snap. And a line drive kick. And a, I think it may have hit the Charger player. And Alex Goodwin gets the ball. We haven't seen an indication yet. This is going to be a tough call because it hits somebody. It was It would be really hard to, for that official to tell who it hit. And Dow High will get it. Ooh. Ooh, Dow may have caught a break there. Well, it, I hope we get a replay of that and we'll be able to see. It's a real heads up play yeah, by yes. Goodwin. And he, they're talking he about. He grabbed it with one if, hand. If Goodwin touched it, that's first touching. So that means that, that ball is dead right at that point. If it bounced off a Dow player, then it's Midland's ball. Here comes the replay and we'll see it as we go. Ball's up in the air. Now, either you're going to catch it or get away. And you can see the uh, Goodwin has got his back to it. Ooh. I think Dow may have caught a break Dow there. Dow may have I think caught it, a break. Huss, the ball carrier, swarmed under by a sea of blue. 
See, that at that point, that, that play right there would have been a great something play. You know, some sort of a toss pass. Midland is kind of a little on its heels right now. Been a good opportunity at that point to do that. Alex Lorenz leading the way on the tackle for the Chargers. Lorenz is a junior, number 50. The one yard gain for Huss. Now, as a coach, what you're gonna say right now, even if I don't score, I cannot give them the ball. Yeah. So I got I gotta get down there. I can't do anything. I want to go in the locker room seven six at the worst. Dow High is gonna call a timeout. It's a good timeout. Like you said, you can't take it with yeah, you. And yeah. uh, you want to make sure you uh, get the right play in here that you don't make a mistake. Exactly. And I want to be able, like I say, 7-6, quite manageable. And, and I have the ball, and Midlands is basically on its heels. If Dow throws the ball at this point, Midland intercepts, something happens, they drive down the field, and they, they're very capable of scoring right. quickly. And now they go in with the momentum. It's going into the locker room with momentum. And then we'll play the second half and see what happens. Well, Dow High's got to be pleased with the uh, how the first half has gone, really. The first half has gone perfect for Dow. Jason Watkins in his uh, fourth season as the Dow High head coach. He's done a terrific job with the program. Eric Metner in his fifth season as the Kemick head coach. Second and nine, Chargers, just inside the 50. Gra Groshek is going to keep it, swarmed under again. Harbrin among the uh, tacklers for the Kemicks. Alexander also in there. Bring up a third and seven. A minute to go here in the first half. Now we'll see Midland immediately. If Dow does not get the first down, we'll see Midland immediately call a timeout yep. and enforce the fourth down. And it's Huss. And uh, not much room to run. No, it's not Huss. I think that is. Uh, Burrell on the carry, and uh, the clock is running. See, I just fourth down. If I'm Dow, the clock's going to run out. I'm not doing anywhere. Nope. See now, now that there's an example of, of you know you say to yourself, All right, it's third down. I got to stop the clock. They've stopped the clock, forced out a punt, but they lost 30 seconds. All right. As you can see, 26 seconds remaining in the half. And uh, I'm sure Dow will punt in this situation as the, the clock has stopped. But uh, I think you're right. Coach Watkins was saying, hey, let's just uh, yeah, use up I'm, whatever clock we can. And uh, I'm not going to stop the clock. That's, you know, that's what, that's what he's saying. I'm not stopping the clock. If they can go in half at, with seven to six. Um, it's a win. It'll be a win. A win. Like you said, kind of hang in there as long as, yeah. as you can. It's a win. And so uh, McNally, number three, will uh, go back to punt. Midland uh, does not even have anybody deep. Here comes the rush. Again, try to turn High something snap. over. And the punt is underway, a line drive. And another good roll for the Chargers. It'll go out of bounds at about the 13 with 18.7 remaining. I see positional kicking. Nobody back. I want to kick it as far down the middle as I can, and nobody touches the ball. So more clock keeps more, running. More, let the clock run, right? I think so. Uh, this you time he kicked it out of bounds. Although I think he knew there was going to be a heavy rush, yeah, he and hey, I got to get, I'm getting I'm rid of this rid ball, of it. and exactly. it turned out well. So, good snap and a good kick, and that makes a big difference. So the bunch formation, Midland is uh, looks like they're going to take a knee and uh, and head into the locker room. 
sure what the delay is here. Yeah. And they'll take the knee and the, the clock will run out here in the first half. And so fans are in, are, uh, have seen a good one here. A well fought, well played, a defensive battle. Midland on top, seven to six as we head into the locker room. The coaches will uh, look to make their halftime adjustments and uh, and uh, come out for uh, what what should prove to be a dramatic second half. Well, it's a very typical down Midland football game. Very close, tough, hard hitting, hard, hard hitting, hitting out there. Absolutely. And uh, the two bands uh, wait for the players to leave the field. And uh, as we mentioned, it's a, it's a big treat in town to have uh, two great schools and with great marching bands. And uh, in a very unique thing, uh, uh, both bands will be on the field at the same time. And so folks, we're gonna send it on down to the field as the Dow High Marching Band, the visitors will uh, take the field first and uh, hope you enjoy our halftime entertainment and we'll see you in the second half.
ladies and gentlemen, under the direction of Mr. William Monroe, Mrs. Kathy Terrence, and Mrs. Cheryl Martini, with percussion instructor Judy Peterson and instrumental specialist Roger Stevens, it's the Midland High School Kemp Marching Band, with drum majors Audrey Martini, Brianna Spencer, Kate Keekweeper, and James Miller, the Kemp Band will feature its percussion section in Aretha Franklin's huge hit, Freeway of Love. Band, are you ready? because it has been played for sports since 1991. This is the very popular Get Ready For This.
So that over 420 students can perform an energetic rocket from deep purple, smoke on the water. And friends, we're uh, back here about to bring you the second half of our Midland Dow ball game. And uh, as we mentioned before, a great job by the uh, both the marching bands. A real treat to see both on the same field at the same time. Great camaraderie and. Uh, uh, great entertainment for the fans here at this game. And uh, speaking of great entertainment, this ball game is providing some great entertainment. Just tremendous defensive play by both teams. And uh, 
as we get ready for uh, the teams that come out. Let's take a look at uh, how things are playing out with our keys of the game. Well, Dow's been able to limit its turnovers and hasn't really made the mistake that could, could make the play go one way or the other. Their third down efficiency has been just okay. Uh, you know, not enough to cause a concern at this point, uh, but still just okay. But the most important one is number three. They have matched Midland's physicality and maybe even gone beyond it a little bit. Uh, and, and that's a question. Has Midland been able to set the tone early? No. Uh, they, uh, Dow's defense has, has stood strong. They did have special team play. They missed the, extra, the field goal, uh, got the touchdown, got the extra point. But it has been Dow's field position game that has been the key in this first half. Now, whether or not this is going to continue, I don't know. But, you know, this is one of the things, and, and, and I was talking to uh, you earlier in the game about this little thing, and I'm looking at Midland. Midland plays very well in space and usually doesn't allow you to do the same. Well, tonight, Dow has not allowed Midland to get in the space. Right. They've made a few first downs, but uh, compared to last week where Johnson was almost unstoppable and Midland was unstoppable in the first half, uh, Dow has really stepped up their defense. But, you know, you see both teams, they're, both teams have 11 men within five yards of the line of scrimmage. Yeah. And, you know, they're challenging. The team that comes out and challenges the throw will be the team that, that wins the second half. Well, uh, Coach, we're going to get a chance to check out some of the first half highlights uh, coming up here. And this is an early uh, turnover for Midland. Just a, really just an over, uh, you know, a, a poorly thrown ball. Two penalties there on that return, blocking in the back, uh, which weren't called, but that's all right. <laughs> that happens. And this is a, a, a play right here where we thought that was going to be a touchdown. It was, it was really a very good call, and Dow was ready for it. It was a perfect timing, perfect call. Here's the first field goal, and it looks good, but just sails wide right. And, and I said that was a big win for Dow to be able to stop him. And here's Grosick throwing out into the flat, almost intercepted. Great catch. Could have been a good play, except it's a flag. Right. And, and brought back. Those penalties there really hurt. And this is the play right here that really hurt Midland. Uh, roll out to the left, cut back to the right. And Gavin Grocek is going to go a long, long way into the end zone. And what an effort by Alec Johnson to bring him down on the one. And, uh, and of course, he gets the 80 yard run. And there's an excellent throw. And I think this is going to happen. We're going to see more of this. You got to get Dow out of the box. And in these throws right here, right on the money. And this one right here is a, is a big, big play. For, uh, yeah, they for got Midland. it right yeah. down to the five. And then here we go. Run over Elmer. Get in the end zone. You got to jam him up. And then here's an excellent play by Lucas Burrell on, a, on an inside stunt. So that was it. Uh, a lot of defense. Groshek with two huge plays in that half. The interception and then the 80-yard touchdown scamper. And uh, that's really helped uh, Dow stay within striking distance. Even even game here through 30 minutes, or th through the first half, excuse me. As the Chargers uh, take to the field, Midland High already on the field. And we're gonna, about to get underway. Midland will get the ball to start the half where they won the toss and had deferred to the second half. This game couldn't have gone any better for, for Dow. As to, as even though they're down a point, uh, they're staying in the ball game, they're playing with them, and you've got that physicality matchup, which I like. Now, who's going to come out in the second half? And, and we might have a 14-6, uh, 13-7 uh, ball game, and we'd be, you know, happy with that kind of performance. It's that, it's that kind of a game. Yeah, there's been a lot of those in this, uh, the history of this rivalry. We mentioned this is uh, 
the first Midland Dow game played in 1970. And uh, this is the 43rd uh, city championship game, uh, Midland Dow game, 44th game overall back in 2005. Uh, the two teams played in the playoffs with Midland winning that game 20 to nine. And uh, you've seen a lot of these games, Coach. All 44. All 44 games. And uh, boy, a lot of memories, a lot of standouts uh, over the years, some big performances. Anything, uh, when you look back, are there uh, some individual performances that uh, were very memorable well, to you? the first game was really special. Mm -hmm. I mean, because uh, uh, really, you know, that was the first time the Dow seniors played Midland. And, uh, the Midland team was just okay. Dow had come off a really good season, and the Midland kids just played great that night. Uh, the 76 game, yep. that was a, was a great game, 20 to 18. Um, just uh, you know, good, hard-hitting game, and uh, was really propelled Dow, Dow to the championship. Dow winning the and, state titles behind. And uh, I remember, you know, as, as a Dow coach, my first win against Midland. Uh, was 35 nothing wow. and that was uh, 1985. 1985 yep and uh, and I remember our kids telling me that they were going to win the ball game and we had we had a really good team that just had so many injuries mm -hmm. during that year that uh, we just uh, couldn't go and then uh, you know I remember being on the bad end of some years <laughs> and on the good end of some years so, uh, but overall, I was, uh, you know, every game was exciting and every game was just special. Well, and you've uh, been on both sides of the field, of course, uh, being an assistant coach at Midland High for a long time and then the head coach at, uh, at Dow for uh, 20 years, wasn't it? Yeah, probably 19 too long. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> so yeah, but that was, that was, you know, and I enjoyed both. Both experiences were great. Mm -hmm. The kids were great. Uh, I loved every minute, and being able to work with good coaches that was uh, that was really special. Well, as we're about to get underway, uh, all of a sudden the rains have come, and uh, <laughs> what was a really nice night uh, has kind of turned sour here. At you can see on the screen the, the rain coming down fairly heavily and the umbrellas are popping out. Uh, the, the bands are uh, kind of scurrying. Rain does not uh, suit well to musical instruments, generally speaking, and so uh, uh, they're kind of heading for cover as far as that goes. It's unfortunate because uh, we have a great one going here tonight. Um, a, uh, we've had many uh, outstanding defensive uh, performances throughout the years. You mentioned 1985 winning 35 nothing. The next year, uh, that was a shutout as well. The only times where there's consecutive shutouts, uh, Dow winning 14 nothing that year as well. And so, uh, like we said Midland will get the ball to start the second half. It is uh, Scott Naples and Travis Patton back to receive. And uh, doing the uh, place kicking for the Chargers is Darren Savage, number 76. And uh, here we go. We'll see uh, Dow just playing a tremendous defensive game that first half. We'll see if Midland was able to make any offensive adjustments uh, to try to make something happen. Not sure what the delay is here for this kickoff. That rain is coming down now. It's, it's pretty close to pouring right now. We've had a rain delay. <laughs> we have had, a, and the wind has picked up as well. And so here is the kick. Naples will take it at the 18. Cuts up the left side. He's quick. 
Still on his feet, drives ahead all the way out to the 45. He caught the ball and just ran straight up the sidelines. Nothing fancy. Showed good quickness on that return. Very good return. We'll see if uh, Midland tries to get uh, number five, Will Williams, a little more involved. He had one touch in that first half. He, you'd probably say, is the speediest guy on the field right now. And uh, and we'll, we'll just see if that might be part of the game plan. He, he is lined up in the backfield. A new look for the Chemics. And it is Williams, but nowhere to run. Stout defense again. Shooty was in there as well as Miller. Now we have a little bit of an interesting thing happen on the Midland sideline. Ryan Singer, number seven, is not, looks like he's physically unable to perform. Oh. They've got a jacket on him. Wow. And now that's their kicker. That is also their receiver. Hmm. And uh, that is a very interesting sideline here. Yeah, Singer is, uh, is really Johnson's favorite target. Second and 11, Johnson back to pass, under rush, brought down, Rogowski, another big play by the Charger defense. You mentioned Singer, 25 catches and yeah, five he's, touchdowns. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a real player for him, but he's not, he's not going to, his helmet is off and he's on the sideline. And this, uh, Dow defense has come to play tonight. They sure have. Boy, I wonder uh, if there's any way to find out what uh, happened to Singer. Didn't didn't really notice anything. Third and 17. Patton on the carry. Gets beat past the original line of scrimmage out to the 45, but Midland will be forced to punt. And that rain is coming down. Wow. This could make things interesting here. This is where uh, turnovers could end up being a big part of that. You gotta be able to handle the ball in these wet conditions. Boy, it's a shame. This great game and uh, it raining so hard. Naples, the punter, takes the snap. Nice high kick, beautiful punt, fair catch. And it's fumbled, falls loose. And Midland recovers, just saying, uh, in these conditions, it's tough to handle the ball. And uh, Dow coughs it up. Cody Meyer on the recovery. The ball popped loose and Meyer jumps right on it. And so huge turn of events here. Midland will take, will take over on about the 11. Well, there's a big, wow. there, remember we talked about the limiting of turnovers. And you just can't allow this. To, this is a big play. It's a great punt. It was a great I punt. I mean, Naples just, and it's very difficult to catch this. See the Dow High guys running backwards. The moment you run backwards, you're in trouble. And so uh, Williams on the carry, but that is blown up again. That's going to be uh, Gabe Miller. And on the stop, I think Burrell as well. And that's going to be a loss. Actually, the line of scrimmage would started at the uh, 12, and the ball is back just inside the 15. Johnson's going to keep it. He's trying to find the edge. Around he goes. Tripped up, and he is just short. Just short inside the one. Good defensive effort to uh, prevent the touchdown, but Johnson, as soon as he saw the edge was clear, uh, he turned out the burners and headed for the pylon. That's the first time they've allowed Johnson to escape on the outside. 
First and goal at the one. Kemix knocking at the door. You got the, the, the backfield. Patton is the tailback. Naples at the fullback. It's Patton drives ahead and he's in for the touchdown. Again, they run right. They like to run right, especially in those short yardage situations. And Patton drives ahead and the Chemex strike. And again, where's Elmer? That's where the ball's going. Right there, you can just see him just push the guy on his back. And you got to get lower than Elmer. He's just too big to block up high. When we look at that replay again, we'll we'll show you exactly what what we're talking about there. You get a chance on your VCR, rewind it because <laughs> that's it. Midland High is going to go for two here. Well, remember Singer is out of the game. Johnson drives ahead. He's going to be short. And uh, that's the effect of Ryan Singer being injured. Oh, okay, so we got a chance at we'll, we'll show you Elmer's at the right tackle, and you'll see what I'm talking about there. He's going to drive forward, and you see the the the, the, the lineman for Dow gets above. You must play below shoulder pads, and it's a good play there. Uh, Naples also Naples with a good getting block. a block on in the kick out, and you get a good play. Losing Ryan Singer is a big, big hurt for Midland High. Absolutely. I mean, just right there, you see the mistake of not having him to uh, to kick the extra point. Now it's going to be interesting. We've got another kicker, 98. Yeah, third, uh, Midland on top now, 13 to six. Brian Rutlowski. Um, Rutlowski. No, 98 is. Uh, Tanner Diamond. I'm sorry, Tanner yep. Diamond. Okay. Tanner Diamond. And so uh, Diamond's kick, kind of a pooch kick, is going to go out of bounds. And Dow uh, will have a pretty good field position. And I will take over at the 35. It's still raining, not quite as hard as it was a little bit ago, but it is definitely still coming down. And a huge turnover by Dow on that punt, and Midland converts. Limit those turnovers, and you're, you're staying in the ball game. Huss on the carry. Oh man, what a defensive play. It was Tyler Solve. Tackle for a two yard loss. Huss uh, limps off. And uh, not putting any weight on that left foot. That would be a big loss for Dow. Yeah. Direct snap, new See, new wrinkle. A little bit of a, a wildcat with Lucas Burrell. He fumbled the ball. I think they're gonna mark him down. Yep, they're they're, they're gonna mark him down. I think they're down. gonna mark him down at that point. Mm, bit of, could be a bit of a break for the Chargers there. And we'll see if he went down. Oh, still on his feet. Oh, wow. There's no question that's he, a fumble. That is a fumble. Wow, big, big break for Dow. Sure didn't, couldn't afford to turn it over again there. Wow. Midland fans uh, pretty irate. 
they don't have a replay. Well, the only explanation I can give to you is that perhaps the whistle blew and stopped his forward progress. That is the only explanation I can give you because he never went to the ground. He yeah, he never, never was on went to the ground. The ground. So, <laughs> right. so how can the ground cause a fumble <laughs> if you don't go to the ground? So I got to say, okay, the, the, the play was... Groshek tries to find some room, but nowhere to go. Scott Naples on the third and five play comes up with a three yard loss. We're gonna look at that same play again here. And okay, there he is there. We'll see the ball pop out. Wow. The, the ball's out, the ball's out, the ball. Now he goes to the ground at that point. But by that time, the ball is completely gone. So Bantz Nap, Nap but uh, McNally, good job getting rid of it. And another great roll. McNally's been the beneficiary of some great rolls. So Midland will take over in that exchange, not getting the turnover, cost them about 25 yards. But they will take over at their own 31 six minutes remaining here in the third quarter Midland on top 13 to 6 you can see that wet track down there the rain is still coming down heavily uh, you know what earlier in the game we said catch the ball catch the ball in this weather get away from the yeah, ball get away from right. the ball you know <laughs> let it just yep. and we saw what happened there with the Dow player Patton scoots ahead, did a nice job to pick up three on the play. He was uh, stopped at the line of scrimmage, kept driving those legs. Uh, Burrell on the tackle. We sure have said his uh, name a lot, Burrell. Patton really, uh, Dow High has done a really good job containing him so far today. Dow defense has been outstanding tonight. Patton again, and this time Rogowski brings him down after about uh, two yards. It'll be a third and five for the Chemex. Dallas yeah. defense is, you know, and this is the thing I, I admired all year about Midland's defense and, and watching Dow play, is that the window opens, that is the hole opens, and Dow tonight is closing that door quickly. And that's the mark of good defensive play. I've seen that all year from Midland, closing mm -hmm. that hole quickly. But tonight I'm really seeing it from Dow. And now, that's a great stretch. See how they stretch that out? I mean, Dow's defense is playing yep. absolutely a fantastic game. Corbet, Burrell on the stop, as well as uh, I believe that was Miller. Joel Miller. And they try to come up with a big uh, sweep on the reverse, but yeah, Chargers stringing that out uh, tremendously. So Naples will be forced to punt. Rain has uh, subsided a little bit, still coming down. And Midland will call time out. Fourth and three with 407 remaining. Uh, the coverage of this football game is being produced by MCTV volunteers and staff. If you'd like to work on shows like this one, come to the next orientation studio training class on the second Saturday, November. That's November 10th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Cost is just $45. And that includes the annual access user fee. Call 837 Three four seven four. That's eight three seven three four seven four. Or come down to MCTV Studio in the lower level of the Grace A. Dow Memorial Library. You can learn more about MCTV at www.midland-mi.org/mctv or follow MCTV on Facebook. And so Naples will line up again and again to kicking punt. with the wind. So Dow's going to have the wind in the fourth quarter. But this is a big 
Big kick right here. Good Great snap. snap. Yep, by Rapanis. Another mm, nice long nice kick. kick, driving him back. This time uh, they just let it go. Boy, uh, Naples is having a great game punting. <laughs> Reverse the field right there. I think uh, Coach Watkins made the point, hey, if you have to run back to field that punt, uh, don't field the punt. Well, Coach, some of your admiring fans walking by the press box here. Two of my golfers. Two of your golfers? Years past. Surprised <laughs> <laughs> didn't come up and ask for an autograph. Well, the rain's coming heavily again. Ball on the 17. Pitch to Corbet. Or Burrell, Burrell. excuse me, sorry. Burrell, Burrell on the carry. The loss of Alex, I mean, we've got two balanced injuries. Alex Huss yeah. and Ryan Singer are both out and both integral parts of the Dow offense and defense. So this heavy rain, does that affect the game plan here? Well, I think it's thrown Midland right out of their game plan. How about taking away the pass? Taking away the pass. And you take away your number one receiver and you've taken away the weather and the receiver. Groshek keeps it and you got corralled. Harbrand in on the stop. Goodwin and Alexander also in on the play. Don needs a play here to change his field position. Two forty five remaining in the third quarter. Midland with a touchdown advantage. Quick handoff to Burrell, but man, he is just swarmed under. Well, the first thing you know is you can't run in there. I mean, there's just too many bodies in there. Playing low and playing hard. Now, if you remember earlier in the year, Midland played Heritage in a very similar type night. The score was 7-0. Right. Heritage is not a good football team. <laughs> but did that affect Midland? I mean, that's the question that you... You're asking now, can they play in wet weather? Can they play in bad mm -hmm. weather? Well, McNally to punt, see. low snap, gets it away. And uh, again, you just get out of the way. That's where he, that time uh, did not take a charger bounce and Midland will take over on the 40. Yeah, but they made it clear to Here's those punt there. returners. Uh, yeah, stay you, away. Stay away. Well, now you got great field position. Ball on the 40, four down territory. Defense for Dow has to stand up. Midland's offense has got to get going. Got to get going. You, you think give about some it, credit to Dow. Dow Midland's only had one real play, and that was the pass right. down the sideline. Dow has had one real play, and that was their cutback run. Defenses have stood tall all night. So this is this is the drive that maybe will define the ball game. Right? Hatton cuts up, spins ahead, but a six yard gain. Sure. Maybe Patton time yeah. here. Yeah, I would say it is. I mean, just watching that run right there, that was a six yard. You know, it comes a point where you get, you, you kind of get tired on defense. Mm -hmm. and this is about that point. You know, end of the third quarter, beginning of the fourth quarter, you get another charge at some point. But right now you're looking at, uh, you know, a second and medium so you're just saying okay just keep driving the ball get four downs have patience Alec Johnson in the shotgun it's Patton again and he's gonna be a little bit shy of the first down Daniel Saeed and uh, Burrell in on the stop 
It's going to be third and one. So, uh, big play here. I'm pretty sure we're in four down territory. Well, we're going, we're going wherever Elmer is, that's where we're going. Elmer at yeah, right, right tackle. right tackle. We're going right. There's just no question. No question, but, and oh, what a job. You see, Dow's coaches, they know. They know. They know what I know. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm going to go over my number one guy. Gabe Miller in on that stop. Brennan Miller also uh, in on the play. That was a loss of two. This is Alex Johnson time right here. That's the end of the third, the quarter. Of the third quarter. And so, seven to six at half, 13 to six right now. Really the only score of that quarter, uh, really a result of the turnover. Um, this is a huge play in this game because. See, uh, as I said, this is the drive that will define the ball game right here. The ball's on the 40, starts on the 40, four down territory. It's now on the uh, 32 yard, 34 yard line. It's fourth and four. It will define the ball game right here. You can see the die student section getting drenched because it is coming down. Wow, that's just un <laughs> like we said in the beginning of this game. It was a, a nice night to watch a football game. Not so much right now. There have been a few games in this rivalry that were. Uh, Played in the weather like this. Remember, I, I think it was Jimmy Parsons' junior or senior year. My my last game was, that was played your last in the game? rain. Thirty-three six, Dow won. I, I put that in, as a, and it just happened to be the, the same same situation. The, the rain on, came down. Yeah, Parmley was Parmley on was team. on that team. Mm -hmm. uh, Scott McDonald, and uh, just everything that we did that night went well with the rain. So Midland is going to punt here. It's all about field position. Naples pooches it and angles it. Oh, what a punt. It's going to go down to, to right the 10-yard ten. Ten line. So this is a purely field position strategy right there. Well, when you're the boss, and what I mean by being the boss is you're in the fourth quarter and you've got a seven-point lead. That means you're the boss in bad weather. Try not to do something that lets the other guy be the boss. Yeah. You know, make him make him earn every yard. So that was a, an, an excellent situation for the punt. That was an excellent call by the coach for Millen. Dow has to go 89 yards. Dow's offense hasn't game. done anything tonight. So just one big play. Just the one play, and it's a broken play. And uh, handoff to Burrell, and he's brought down immediately by Solve. Actually, probably uh, no gain on the play. Solve makes some, he's a bit of a playmaker well, himself. Those, those four guys down inside, you know, other teams don't realize how hard they come. I gotta give Matt Raponis a lot of credit. He does an outstanding job with that defense. I mean, they play hard. And they play the same way every year, no matter <laughs> yep. who who's playing in there. So it's it's see look at that. That is running to the football. Running to the football. That physicality you just cannot you, you, you th they are an example of their coach right there. He was a great player for me back in the in the eighties uh and then he was a, a great player for yeah. all the other defensive mm -hmm. coaches who were. So it wasn't the coaches. It was Matt <laughs> Rapanas who was a great player. Steven Elmer brings down Groshik. Uh, that little rollout play that they scored on, try to make something happen. Uh, but uh, Elmer and Alexander bring him down for another loss. Back to the eight yard line. Back to pass. Ball's batted down. And uh, Dow taking a chance there deep in their uh, own territory. Tried to throw the ball downfield, but swatted down. I didn't, didn't see who got it. May have been Sobe again. 
But Dow will be forced to punt in the field position firmly Midlands advantage right now. That's why uh, uh, Coach this Mender could very had decided well a, to punt. This could very well be a block punt. This could be a block punt right here. McNally and it's Harbin almost got a piece of it and a good Dow bounce again. It will come to rest at the 36. I'm really surprised McNally didn't do a little flop there because he did get a little bump and a, a good flop would have gone a long way off. towards, <laughs> you know. I had a coach named Ernie Melzon who mm -hmm. would teach the flop. Did he really? Oh yeah, uh, he, he was, he was, and he'd do a great job of it. He'd have a, a gym mat that came out, and so guys would come in and they kind of, and then he'd show them how to do uh, the flop. He even yeah. brought the mat out. Brought a it? mat out on the field, <laughs> you know, used it to teach blocking the kick and how to take a flop. Did it pay off? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of laughed. It was, it was a good relief in, you know, in, in the dog days of August. <laughs> So Patton, uh, Donnie Doughty with, Donald uh, Doughty with a big play and just not much room to run at all for the Chemex. A two yard loss. And uh, it is pouring again here at Midland Community Stadium. That rain has just uh, nearly nullified the offense. It's become pretty predictable. It's pretty risky to throw it very far downfield. Both teams can't turn it over. Patton drives ahead and he's met at the 35. See, that looked like a great chance for a play. Patton got up into the chute and, and did you notice he got hit and knocked straight back for, a, it was only, only a three yard gain. And what I thought was good, Lucas Burrell hit him. He hit him hard. Yeah, and you know, this is, uh, this is again, you know, looking at this field position, Dow's gotta do something to turn this field position around or Midland's just gonna sit here all night long using their three and four downs. This is a big play right here. Will, will, will Midland throw the ball? Third and nine. Johnson's gonna keep it. Not much room to run. But he does hang on to the ball. And it'll bring up fourth Here down and probably another punt, punt again. And why not, really? Good uh, stand by the Charger defense. This rain is an equalizer tonight. You know, and we're seeing a, a great defensive performance out of both football teams. Should Dow uh, go after this punt? Try to get a block no, here? No, 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 no. No, you got to play the game here. Play the game, look for the fake. That's what you're looking for. Good snap, Naples gets the kickoff and it'll take a chemic bounce and keep rolling, rolling, rolling all the way down to the two yard line. Tell you what. It's a field position game. I mean, it is gonna be a field position for the rest of the game right here. You don't and Dow's not going to be able to get out of this hole unless something happens. They got to they got to generate something to get out of this hole. You don't often uh, necessarily give a game ball or MVP to a punter, but uh, Naples has made a big difference in this game. Naples has been the difference maker. As you can see, 7:48 remaining. Just a one touchdown game. If Dow High can. Uh, Bust and loose for a long let one me repeat and can turn this again it around. To you, Dave. Austin Raponis has not made a bad snap. Right. I mean, not even a close to a bad snap. They've all been perfect. The ball on the two. Quick hitter. Alexander uh, brings him down. Couldn't quite see. Huss is back in the game. I think that might have been Corbet on that the was tackle. Corbet, yes. Huss is back in there at tailback. 50 Alex Lorenz checks out the lineup for the Chemics. 
We'll go no gain on that one. It'll be second and 10 from the two. Just over seven minutes remaining. Dow desperately needed a big, big play, but you gotta be careful down here. It's Groshik. He rolls and he's trying to get away, safety. but it's gonna be a safety. Wow, just swarmed under Ganya, Alexander, Harbrin all in on the play. He tried that same play where the quarterback kept it and uh, he just faced blue jerseys. Could not get out of the end zone. See, it's a little bit, there's a great play right there. And now here comes the, here comes the crowd. And man, they got him. Tell you what, Terrence Thomas Terrence, made a great play. Terrence Thomas made the whole play. He's the one that forced it and made it spill to the outside. Now what that did, now, now it's a nine point game. Yeah, now two possessions. Two possession. And and Dow has and to with uh, six kick minutes here. to go. It's a, and Midland's going to get the ball back again in great field position. Dow desperately needs a turnover. You know where they can cut the field in half, especially. Especially in these conditions to go 80, 90 yards, so tough. The uh, flag area, <laughs> that flag is heavy to start with, but when you add about 20 pounds of water, that, uh, he's getting a workout. <laughs> getting a cheer from the crowd though, they appreciate the effort. A little pooch uh, punt is going to go out of bounds. And uh, I don't think I've seen that before. Go out of bounds I, on a safety kick. What, I, uh, I've what, never seen that before. He slipped. So I'm not sure. He what, went to kick uh, it and he slipped. What's the penalty? So, well, you have your choice. You can have them re kick it or you can take it at the spot. Where it goes out of bounds. Right. Might as well take the ball. Don't risk fumbling it or and we will do just that. And here's the ball on the 45 yard line. And really, I don't expect Midland to drive down the field, but I do expect them to eat up the clock. that full house backfield with uh, Fisher in Naples in front of Patton. They just said, uh, you know what? We're gonna run the ball, kill some clock. It's Patton. Picks up another couple of tough yards. Now this is where Midland's offensive line has to shine. And this is, in this kind of weather, in a power offense, you've got to drive people off the ball. You've got to say to yourself, we're going to go three, 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 down the field. And as a team, you've got to do that, as a, as a unit. You can't be disjointed here. Second and eight. This time it's a pitch to Patton. Cuts back up. And uh, he's not going to gain anything. Burrell on the stop for the Chargers. Third and two. Uh, Millen pretty much content to milk the clock and just hang out of the football. If there's six minutes, we're going to run six plays. I mean, that's, that's got to be your philosophy. In this weather, just get the move one, one chain. Get, right. get one chain moved, and you can win the ball game here. Third and eight. Patton. 
And he's going to peck his way for about three. And middle little punt. Middle little punt. The third time early. Really Put him back in the hole again. The There's a doubt player shaking up. Can't quite hmm. see who that is. I think it's 55. Gabe Miller. Yeah, that is 55 Miller. Gabe Miller, he's had a terrific game here. He's part of that uh, defensive unit. He just uh, really got a hand to both defenses today. I'll tell you, this is the best that I've seen Dallas defense all year. Right? The best. They have they are flying to the ball. And, and just Down doing a, a, just a great job. The best I've seen. And consequently, we've expected more from the Midland offense. You know, and it, it hasn't really, you know, and the weather's been a factor. But even in the first half, right. when the weather wasn't a factor, Dow's defense has yeah. been, a, you know, has kept Midland's offense. I mean, you consider what's happened, uh, you know, the long, the, the almost interception that led to the play down on the mm -hmm. two yard line, the fumbled kick and uh, the safety. Right. And that's been that's it. one play, one play, one offensive play has been Midland's offense tonight. Well, the ball's at the 39. There's two chargers deep all the way back at the one yard line. So they want to be able to Run up to catch this kick. You got to catch it. Naples. Punt is a little short. He takes a chemic bounce. A huge chemic bounce. And the ball is going to roll down to the three yard line. Naples continually yes. uh, just puts the Charger offense in a hole. And that's a weapon. You know, uh, that little pooch kick is a weapon. Because you know, your chances are you're going to get a good roll out of it. And he has done that very efficiently tonight. Give credit to that Dow High student section. Still, still there. Still there. Still behind their team. I'm guessing they're a little bit wet right now. The rain continues to pound down. 425 remaining in the ball game. Yeah, not much doing there. Elmer in on the stop. This is Alexander. Well, you're running right into the teeth of the Midland defense. And there's not much there. Caleb Richard, the sophomore with the carry. Will be no gain on the play. It's a tough call because you got to score twice. There's under four minutes to go. You got to find a way to move downfield. I think we have an official's timeout. It looked like uh, Richard uh, has a helmet something problem. with his helmet. Yeah. He's going to come out of the game. Corbet goes back in for him. The clock rolls. Dog gonna have to put it in the air here. Or you gotta get some chunks of yardage somehow. I would say at this point you better. Groshek back to pass, and it is intercepted. Maybe that might be no, that simultaneous. They're calling it simultaneous that catch. Was, uh, excellent play by Zach Hook because that looked. Like it was picked off. Alex like, Johnson had it. And, and I think Hook took it back or never gave it up. The ball arrived, both players right around the same time. A little hook route to Hook. And yeah, Johnson had his hands on it. And uh, Hook just out battled him. So third and four, Groshek with the keeper. 
Cuts up. Oh, man, Alex Goodwin with a huge stick. And he's going to hold him short of the first down. If Grosick doesn't cut back, he's run, still running. Yeah. If he doesn't cut back, he's still running. And Dow calls timeout. Dow has to go for it. Yeah, absolutely. They have to go for it. 248 remaining, fourth and one. Goodwin from a safety position. Yeah, we, we need to see that on Bam. a replay if we get a chance because that was a terrific hit. And you will see the opening on the outside that uh, Grosick missed. Would, would have been a big run. And so uh, for all intents and purposes, this is for the game because uh, dow has got to keep possession of the ball. I'd run the same play. But I would, same play. Well, Grosick is their, uh, he's the man. He's their playmaker. Huss frequently is too, but he's not in there. Lucas Burrell in at tailback. Burrell, nowhere to run. It's like Kemmicks knew that was coming. And uh, that was just a wall of blue for Burrell. No place to run. Harbor and Elmer leading the charge, but. We'll show a replay of. All right now, as you can see right here, this is the cutback. And you see, right, he's going to cut back, but there's nothing to the outside. You know, we'll see it at another point. Oh, a little technical difficulty there. See if we can uh, come back to that later. We're at first and 10, Midland, 243 remaining. And they just need to uh, run the clock out. Uh, and if they're able to do that, Midland uh, will be able to complete that perfect regular season. It's Patton. Drives ahead inside the 10. Gabe Miller on the tackle. And Dow will call timeout. About a five yard gain for Patton. Well, coach had mentioned uh, for Midland High, trying to uh, have that perfect regular season, that is a very tough feat. Does not happen very often. If you go back, uh, really the last time, you gotta go back to 2003, uh, where Midland was, uh, Midland High was undefeated in the regular season. Dow High had the perfect season back in that uh, magical night 1976 year, with Scott Correct. Alexander and Kevin Northup uh, leading the Chargers, one of the great teams really ever produced really? in Midland. Um, 1994, Midland was uh, undefeated in the regular season, ended up 11 and one. That was the year that I think they lost in the Silver Dome. Yep, to pretty the, sure. Brother Rice. Yep. Second and four. Patton again, cuts it up, down to about the four, and Dow will call timeout again. Let's kind of continue on that uh, vein, just show you how rare it is. 80, 1989, Midland was uh, undefeated in the regular season. And 1984, and then I believe in 1980. Uh, it just doesn't happen very often. No, it doesn't. A 1984 game uh, was a 9-7 or 7-6 seven, 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 six game, yeah. and we missed two field goals in the last minute of the game. Dow missed two field goals in the last minute the of last the game? last minute of the game. Wow. And our field goal kicker uh, was injured earlier in the year at Bay City Central. Oh, is that right? Wow. Mike Moffitt. 
He had some great defenses back in that time because uh, only gave up seven points and then the following two years had shutouts. Wow. Well, it's third and two, 225 remaining. Dow High is now out of timeouts. Somehow need to get a turnover, for sure need to get a stop. It's Patton again, running right, and this time he's in for the touchdown. Just a heavy dose of running right behind uh, Steve Elmer. Elmer, and this time uh, they found the seam, and Patton goes in for the touchdown. Very strong, very, very strong. Again, the big guy just plowing under. What Naples, a job. Naples with a good lead block as well. What a job. So Travis Patton, that's his 12th touchdown of the season rushing. Well, Dave, just like we talked earlier, the whole second half dealt with field position. Yep. Did you get it? Or if you if you you got it, you kept it. And now with Dow was unable to break the field position and never got out of the, the zone. And as a result, Midland's able to convert the, the safety, the the fumble punt, and now this uh, turnover really on the ten yard line. Right. Whoa. That was uh, Gregowski a little uh, over anxious. Good guess, good guess. It'll make the two point conversion a little bit easier for the Chemex. It was down to the uh, one and a half instead of the three. Remember Ryan Singer, the place kicker. Um, something happened, we're not quite sure what the injury was, but he was unable to uh, continue playing in the second half. And so Midland and both their touchdowns here in the second half uh, electing to go for two. Patton running right, surprise, surprise, and he is gonna be short, I believe. Be short. Sure, no indication from the official. And uh, he will be short, so Dow stops him. It is 21 to six with 219 remaining. Dow's gonna need two touchdowns and they're gonna need him in a hurry. See, they needed two touchdowns anyway. It didn't matter. I mean, the nine points means two touchdowns. The six points still means two touchdowns. Because <laughs> you're not, you're not going to kick. Right. In these conditions. And Dow's not going to kick anyway. Dow's extra points this year have been atrocious. They've been a, what I call an adventure. <laughs> Tanner Diamond will uh, kick off for the second time for the Chemex. <laughs> Been an interesting night. A, uh, just a hard fought battle throughout and then the weather came in the second half and really altered the complexion of this game. Kickoff fielded at the 15 by Miller. There's a flag on the play. Miller takes it out beyond the 35, but I think this one may come back. Joel Miller, the junior, on the kickoff return. It's a hold on the return. That doesn't help. Yeah, you do have to give those uh, students for Dow High some credit over there, Coach. I give those students a lot of credit. They're still there supporting their team. They're great kids, Absolutely. great students. And, uh, and and I look over here on the side, Midland same students with Midland, are still right? over here. Yep. Parents have all gone home. <laughs> That's right. But, uh, you know, the band's gone. <laughs> well, the students are here. 
You got to figure the band goes home, a thousand of the band parents go home too. <laughs> Ooh, reverse, it's a fumble. He tried uh, Brennan Miller on the reverse, but uh, it was not a clean handoff. And so the ball will uh, go back to about the nine. Minute 50 remaining. Dow cannot stop the clock with a timeout. They're out of timeouts. Flag on the play. I think a charger jumped there. Well, Coach, the uh, barring a miracle here, uh, looks like Midland High uh, will prevail. And if that's and the case, how, perfect season. how does the, and have the perfect season and uh, and head to the playoffs once again? Um, any indication on uh, what the playoff picture looks like? Well, I had a list of teams that could possibly they could play. Definitely Western's in that picture, but. Midland is in that unique situation depending on how the state will split you up. And Midland could either be the largest Division right. II team or the smallest. There's an interception on the play. Division I team. And uh, Johnson will just run it out of bounds. There's going to be a unnecessary roughness penalty on Midland on that return. They tried the halfback pass. Alec Johnson alertly intercepted and then uh, just ran it out of bounds. That was Huss overthrowing. And uh, see, Johnson ran out of bounds and then came a late uh, block there. He may have surprised his own teammate, but yeah, ran I, out of bounds. Uh, yeah, I, that was a pretty clean block in my mind. I think I would have give I, you know you just can't stop him. And he ran out of bounds, and you, you're coming to block for the guy. See, I think I don't think the the ref saw that Johnson was running out, and I think Naples just figured he was going to return it. And the penalty is against Midland. Yeah, it's on uh, Naples right. on the, the penalty is against Midland for Naples, but as I said, it was it was a clean block. So with 117. I kind of think our officials have missed some calls tonight that have been unique. <laughs> uh, the, the, the one one official has thrown enough flags down here on our side, and then the fumble, the fumble that wasn't, a, that what, that, the, the, the fumble that was the a fumble that was not a fumble. Mm -hmm. You know, and then that play right there, which was a pretty clean block. It was late. I got to give it, it was a late, mm -hmm. but it was still a clean block. I mean, don't take away the player's aggressiveness. We're under a minute to go. And uh, celebration is uh, starting here on the middle and sidelines. And we'll be able to Take a knee. Johnson will just wait for the 10 second signal. Takes a knee. And that will probably do it if the officials take their time to uh, put the ball in play. Well, Dave, I'll say this. This was really a good football game. It was a good football game. Good, hard hitting, typical Midland, Midland Dow football game. Really a good game and decided by. The turnovers, some mistakes. Uh, right. You know, the, and really, both defenses stood tall all night. Our, the offenses did not. The offenses did not come tonight to play. No, it was impressive by both Midland and Dow defensively. Just incredible, incredible performances. And so, uh, with that, the Chargers will conclude their season. At uh, five and four on the year, they've had a, had a lot of ups and downs during the season, um, for sure. And I uh, give credit to their coaching staff and their players. A great hard-fought game here, but uh, just going to fall a little bit short. Midland, meanwhile, <laughs> will finish the regular season undefeated, nine and zero, the Saginaw Valley League uh, Northern Division champions. 
And they will head to the playoffs. They'll head to the playoffs for the 11th consecutive year. We'll see what and, happens. And will host those playoffs. Yeah, for sure, because they will be the top seed in their, uh, Wh their region for sure. Whatever, or their district. wherever they play. And uh, we're going to, in a moment, take a look at some of the second half highlights. Uh, as you can see, the two teams congratulating one another. All right, here's a, 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 the, the punt here by Naples. This is an incredible punt. Oh, man. And the Dallas guy was struggling with it the whole time. And this was the turning point in the whole ball game yep, right no here. No question. Right no here. Question. This was, it put the field position completely in the hands of the Dow. And this is a great run by, this is the only time, the only time the Dow defense did not control Johnson. You got to control him. Go and he got down there close enough to get the, the, this is the touchdown right here. And of course, this is a touchdown over Elmer. Yep, you mentioned good lead block by Naples. Right. What a great game. And then this is a, a the fumble that was the, the fumble that was not called. And as you can see right here, the ball comes out and is lost, and the official's right on it, but he can't see it. <laughs> he left his dog at home. Apparently. <laughs> wow. Another huge play and there's here. There's a play right there. Wow, the, the Midland defense just swarmed to the ball. Yeah, and uh, Thomas didn't get the tackle, but he's a guy that really made the play right there. And then this play right here, this is, again, Alex Johnson being a pest. <laughs> you know, just, it just is everywhere. Just does a great job in here. Just going to settle it in. Great run right there into the end zone. strong and hard and here's the interception here and a uh, little too much too late well okay the uh there's the chemic faithful on the field celebrating their city championship here in 2012 um a great game a uh, very unusual night as the weather turned and it rained heavily for much of that second half you can see Coach Watkins addressing his uh, Charger team, valiant effort, uh, tremendous defensive effort, just uh, falling a little bit short. And uh, so uh, our final score tonight, Midland High 21, Dow High 6. Midland High will head on to the playoffs uh, with their undefeated season. And you can see on the screen the times where you'll be able to catch this broadcast again uh, in in the future and so folks we're glad we could uh, bring you this game along with all the other uh, mct volunteers bring you the uh, great camera work the the replays and uh, appreciate all the efforts from the the volunteers who were able to bring our community uh, sporting events throughout the season and so this is dave marsh bringing you the action along with frank aldemore we say uh, good night everybody We'll see you next time.